This is the Nashville 2 Podcast with your host, Edward Fox. Good day, viewers and listeners. It's Ed Fox back with another amazing episode of Nashville 2. You know what makes an amazing episode of Nashville 2? You do. Nashville 2 is where we tell your story. So if you know anybody that should be on the Nashville 2 podcast, we do all the audio, we do all the video, we put it out, you know, everywhere we can. Um, have them reach out to me. In fact, they can go to Nashville, the number two, com, and they can register to be a guest on the show. So, and today I have... I have a special guest. I harassed her at the <laughs> farmer's market in Franklin because her artwork is amazing until she agreed to come on my show. I didn't twist her arm or anything like that. I just kept telling her dad jokes until she gave up and said, okay, I'll come on your show. It's Emily Newman from Emily Newman Fine Art. Did I get that right? You got it right. Welcome to the show. Now, Thank you. You're welcome. So let's let them in on a little secret. You're kind of just like just outside. You're 45 minutes from Nashville. You're out at Cookville. I came out to Cookville a couple of months ago for a networking group, the B&I group that meets there in one of your restaurants. Amazing people. I love Cookville. Like, it's awesome. So, yes, but we won't tell anybody it's not actually Nashville. So, folks, if you're listening to this, don't tell anybody. Okay. Well, I was born in Nashville. Well, there you go. Okay, so yeah. you're, you're an actual Middle Ten. Is is Cookville part of Middle Tennessee? This is where uh -huh. I get confused. Okay. I mean, I think so. I'm assuming, yeah. We're, we're considered like the Upper Cumberland. Okay. Oh, I've heard um, that term, Upper Cumberland. Well, we are, but we are Middle, we are Middle Tennessee. We're in the middle. We're, okay. we're mid and we're kind of to the north. There you go. So we're going to take that. We're going to claim that, that uh, Emily's <laughs> Middle Tennessee, born and raised in, Na born in Nashville, yeah. So tell us, did you end up leaving Tennessee to learn about your art or did you do all that locally or, or tell me that story? Yeah. So we, so I was born in Nashville and I think um, uh, maybe when I was around like three or four in the early eighties, my parents relocated to Florida. They had a business, they lost their business. They had to start over and we had family in Florida. So we moved out to Florida and, um, they ended up raising me there and I lived there until I was um, in my 20s and then I moved to New Orleans and that's kind of where I got my artist fever right because I was always an artist but not you know at the level that I wanted to be I just kind of did it for fun but I would like go in galleries and I would just see artists and they were just inspired me so much it was like the most incredible feeling and so, I was like, man, I want to do that. Right. So did you start um, in a particular type, what, what do you call that, field or a particular type of uh, techniques or, or products that you use? Did you do, what do you do? What do you paint right now? What do you paint with? So right now I paint with oils, but I originally started with um, acrylics. Okay. And then if you want to go like way back in time, I started with just um, charcoal. That was my first love was charcoal. So did you start doing art in school? Were, were you always drawing or coloring in or doing that sort of stuff? I was always drawing. I did not even finish high school. I, I was just, it was just not for me. And um, I, I would get lost a lot in class because I was just drawing and I was writing poetry and I was just this little artist little butterfly and I, I didn't make it so um and I and I went to college for a little while and I dropped out of college just I just couldn't I just couldn't fit in that little that little box that they wanted me to fit in and um I knew we had something in common because I'm a ninth grade dropout so I finished ninth oh. grade and then I left school to start a business and yeah we still get educated and we still make a lot of mistakes and we still pay for our education we're just doing it a different way we're just not getting government education. Right, right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, so I'm always into learning and, you know, just I, I want to learn what I want to learn. I don't want right. to learn what someone else is telling me to learn, you know, right. so. Yeah. Um, but I I didn't, I just drew for fun. It was kind of like, um, like a diary. My son you said that the have, other day. Do you still have those drawings? 
Um, my mom does. Okay. I don't I don't have them in my possession. I wish. I wish I had my art. I'd love to look over it and see it. And um, yeah, I mean, I'd love to see what I was up to. I, I remember drawing a lot. I did a lot of people. Right. I was very into people, which is something that I don't really touch now. Right. I don't, I don't go near it. But um that that was primarily what I did. And um now, I just most, did it for fun. These, sorry, most of these drawings that you did, were they on like regular size paper? Or were they bigger pieces? Yeah, I would get like a real large sketch pad. And then some of them I would just draw on like computer printer paper. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. You know, I would sit down. I remember we had this like little glass top table in, in my mom's house and I would get like, you know, this huge stack of paper and I would sit Indian style and I would just, I mean, we're talking all day. Right. We're I had talking, I didn't come up for air. <laughs> I had a friend in uh, seventh grade in, in Penrith. He used to like to get, his dad was an accountant, I think, and he had the rolls of paper, like the little rolls of paper that go on the adding machines back in the day. The, and he would draw a whole story out in one of these rolls and he would just keep drawing and drawing and drawing. Mm -hmm. But he learned to draw it in reverse because when you rolled it up, uh, you know, so I, however he did it, it was just amazing. And I always looked at that, shoot, I can't even draw a stick figure, right? Like, you know, it's just, I don't have that talent. So when I, when I walked through your tent and I had a look at some of the stuff that you're doing, it's like, oh my gosh, my daughter would love this. My daughter is an artist. She will paint us stuff and send it to us for birthday presents and Christmas presents. She hates me showing it, but I'm going to show you one. I want, I, I told her I wanted one about Australia. And so she drew this one for me. Uh, she painted this one for me. And, wow, she, very and, unique. and yeah, and so there's like a moon down there and, a, you know, if you're not, hey, folks, if you're listening on the podcast and you're saying, well, we can't see it. No, you're going to have to check out the video on YouTube or something. Mm -hmm. So uh, so she painted that. And so she loves to paint, too. Right. And so yeah. I always admire you guys that have that talent uh, for doing that stuff. So tell me a little bit about uh, what you're painting now. I met you in Franklin. You set up at the Franklin Farmers Market. Do you do that all year round or just in the warmer months? Oh, no. Like I go out there when it's freezing cold and just wondering what I'm doing with my life. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know why I do it. I'm a glutton for punishment. No, I'm really passionate about what I do. I'm really passionate about the relationships that I've made at the farmer's market. You know, I've got people that come and see me every week. It's like, right. um, it reminds me when I was a bartender and, uh, you know you had your regulars and right. um so I have my regulars that I see and I'm I'm really loyal to them um and I, I love going I've been going out there for the past seven years it's oh, wow. it's I would say it's like 90 percent of what I do like is that is is the farmer's market type model is that your bread and butter or is oh yeah that's when I say 90 percent Right. That's what I'm talking about. It's in, it's insane. I mean, I've gone out there before and sold like eight paintings. Wow. In a day. And so I guess your your client can run the gamut then from somebody. Yeah, I, well, I have a lot of I don't just sell, you know, um, my original paintings. I have um, greeting cards and I have magnets and I have fine art prints and I have puzzles and I've, you know, I have something for everyone. So everyone can come in there and they can get a little something to make them happy. You know, that's what it's about. And, you know, the one that keeps attracting me is that big cow pitch. Is it in the sunflowers? Is that yours? Is that the, the cow? No, he's just a big. Oh, he's just, just a big, big cow. Just yeah. a giant cow. I live across the street from a cow farm. Right. And that's one of the things that drew me to where I live now. I have an amazing view and there's just a cow pasture and lots of cows and I just see them every day. And so I get inspired. I'm sure he stood still the whole entire way. No, it's an amalgamation, right, of different. Yeah. yeah. But it'll, it'll sit still for that. I usually, if I paint animals, I'm going off of photographs. And when right. I paint my landscapes, I'm going off of my own photographs. And these are all experiences that, that I've had and are very personal to me. Right. Um, the area that I live in is just so gorgeous. I've just been so blessed. I mean, I can get to a um, a beautiful waterfall, you know, within an hour hike that I can swim in, and and I just I spend as much time outside as I possibly can, you know, and then I take photographs. That's part of what I do, and then I recreate. 
the photographs the whole time I'm painting I'm I'm almost like I am in this beautiful place that that really touched me on such a deep level I'm reliving it and painting it and it's really amazing I can't believe I get to do this <laughs> yeah, it's like the dream job right yeah I had, yeah it's kind of cool it's amazing so for you so for for our for our viewers and listeners that what made you decide you, you like you said didn't finish school uh, didn't finish high school didn't finish college but have got into the art there must have been times where you were struggling and wondering if this was the right path or have you yeah. been always been able to sell I, I would there's a lot of questions there to unpack let's start with that yeah, I've I've struggled so much. I've thought at times that I must be out of my mind. I have three children, you know, that are counting on me to make the right choices, and um, and so, you know, for a while we were really doing well. My husband had an amazing job. He traveled a lot. We were just we made great money. And uh, one day he just got laid off. His company downsized, and. Um, he traveled and so he wasn't able to find anything around Cookville. You know, he looked for a little while and I was like, you know what? I got some paintings and there was a local market here. And I was like, I'm just going to sell a couple of these just so we can get by, right. you know, we'll just see what happens. I was selling them for like two, $300 a piece. And, um, you know, and people were just buying them up like crazy. It was nuts. And, um, I was like, Hmm, this is kind of interesting. I wonder if I could go a little bit bigger. Because Cookville's really small. So I talked to another artist and he was selling at the Franklin Farmer's Market. He was selling t-shirts and he said, you know, we'll see thousands and thousands of people, you know, roll through there in one market. And I was like, that's what I need. So I applied and they immediately got back to me and I got in and like so fast. And my first day out there, I think I sold like three paintings and then the next week and people were just like enamored. They just loved having an artist out there that, and so, but it, it, it's, it's been rough because sometimes it, you just, the sales just don't come and you're like, you know, what's next. And, but I always make it. And then sometimes I'm like really making it. And then sometimes I'm not. <laughs> So that that's a whole, you know, I do a I do a business podcast. Actually, I do two business podcasts, and uh, that's the the whole fun thing about being a entrepreneur as opposed to a business owner. Because I and my daughter, who's now twenty five, is trying to transition from artist into business owner artist, right? And she is working on the digital design category and and doing branding and helping them with color palettes and fonts and all that which which she grew up getting that love for me from me is like you know if you're a funeral director you're probably not using comic sans as your main font yeah. to promote your business right or uh, or primary colors you know right. the primary colors uh you know you wouldn't be wearing this probably you know uh the yeah. american flag shirt and so uh it, she's like dad being an artist is one thing, but then being a business owner, that's also, it's so much more. Like it's such a struggle at times. And then other times it's just a bunch of fun because the sales are there, the business is there, you're feeling good, you know, and it just is this, you just ride this wave. And yeah. I, think, I think that's how most entrepreneurs feel. I, I, people with, with uh, like my wife, my wife's a pharmacy manager for one of the major, uh, for Kroger actually. And one of the struggles is trying to hire, right? Right now, they can't find people to work in in the stores and in the pharmacies. And her job has been pretty consistent through COVID, everything, you know, just like your husband's, that they could rely on their income, you could rely on that, that sort of stuff. And then when they have to rely on us, that it goes like this, it's it's a whole different world, a whole different ball game. It's, it's, it's you learn so much about yourself, and um, you learn how to be a minimalist. You know, I'm very, I'm very much a minimalist, um, but I always have been that way. Thank goodness. Right. Um, you know, so I can totally make it, I can make it work. Um, but every year my business gets just a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. 
my my confidence grows, my trust in whatever this divine power is that's right. supplying for me. You know, like I just I've grown so much as a human being by I wouldn't change anything for the world. When my husband lost his job, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing that could ever happen. I look back on it now and I'm like, this is the best thing that could have ever isn't that, happened. Isn't that funny? Regardless of what our religious beliefs, I, I'm Christian, but uh, I I feel that when you put it out in the universe, for me, it's God. Uh, he opens doors, right? He opens doors for me that... I would have been too afraid to open. Oh, yeah. And I'm a risk taker. I'm a risk taker. But I would have been too afraid to open some of those doors. And it's just worked out. You know, that, that's. I feel like the door was open and I was like, shut out. out. And <laughs> <behind."> <laughs> that's what it felt like. Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, it's funny. My my husband got, they, they, they called him back. They were like, hey, we want to, we've got a spot for you. And he declined. We were just like, no, let's just do this. It's fun. It's exciting. It's not, it's not conventional. My children are seeing their mom make it as an artist. Like that's huge. And they're all creatives. So I'm trying to show them, Hey, you don't have to go the safe route. In fact, don't I mean, do right. it if you want, but yeah. you don't until have you, to. Until you're 40, take the unsafe safe route. And then if yeah. you feel like at 40, you got to start doing Okay, but I don't think so. I, I agree with you. So what I was going to ask you is because my kids look uh, talk to me in there, 30, 28, and 25, let's say, in 2023, when who, see, who knows when they'll see this. But um, what they used to say to me is, Dad, do you have any regrets? Do you, would you change anything? I said, look, if I changed all the bad things that happened, then I wouldn't be the person I am today. If I changed all the challenges, I wouldn't be where I am today. Uh, if I had not gone to Brisbane and met your mother randomly, you wouldn't be here. So, yeah. no, I wouldn't change a thing. I, I wouldn't give up the negative experiences just to have less negative experiences because they've benefited me in so many positive ways. It's It's crazy, right? As a business owner, it can be tiring paying cash for everything you need. Well, there's a better way. Introducing Trade Bank of Nashville. Our bartering service lets you exchange goods and services without the need for cash transactions. Trade Bank helps businesses like yours reduce expenses, bring in new business, and keep your cash where you need it most. Find out more and join our barter network today. Start getting what you need without paying cash because sometimes barter is just smarter. Apply today at nashville.tradebank.com. The negative, well, the negative, I call them like, you know, quotations because we just perceive them as negative, but they're right. actually like, they're actually blessings. We learn more from our, we learn more from our challenges than we do successes. And I find that the stories I tell and the stories my grandparents told were the challenges, were the struggles. You don't talk about, oh man, I, I, I did this and it worked and we made lots of money and we lived high on the hog for a while. No, no. We talked about when I slept in the back of the shop as a 15 year old and the health department said, you can't do that. And I said, I don't have any money for an apartment because I just started this business. You know, all of the yeah. struggles, the, the dropping a case of drink and it all exploding everywhere and me not being able to afford to replace it because I didn't have any money, you know, and. Yeah those crazy things and for you it must have been like that at times too because you have you have a cost in all the materials that you have to buy i bet your canvases aren't cheap paint canvases are through the roof right now oh my right. gosh all my art supplies like double is crazy right. so i raised my prices a little bit and compensated for it and well, I think it's also time you can start to investigate other materials like, right. Oh, what if we what if we take Hessian sacks and turn that into, uh -huh. you know, I'm trying to talk my, my daughter. My clients would get upset if I changed well, my material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, you're you could do this. You could do you know, you've got we talked a little bit about your name, um, Emily Newman Fine Art, right? Um you could have this experimental Emily Newman over here. That's another division that, that, that this is my experimental stage and have that stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a great idea. Cause there, there are parts of me, they want to come out so bad and I'm like, Shh, stay in there. <laughs> Look, I, people said, Edward, how do you do five podcasts? I said, it's simple. I allocate 
six time slots of half an hour each. That's three hours. I allocate them to the five podcasts. Whoever books that time, that's the podcast we're doing. Yeah. Right? So I can do Nashville too. I can do Bada Bing, Bada Boom. I can do the Wake Up Call with Ed and Paul. I can do Wichita Wow. I can do the Edward Show. That Hang on, that's five. I can't count. <laughs> I, I, I think I want to do a Tennessee Christian Chamber one or a Williamson County Chamber, but they haven't got back to me yet, so we'll see. Okay. But, but you can make it work if you figure it out. So if you make your main thing your main thing, for me, I own two barter exchanges. I help businesses all across the country barter for stuff that they need without spending cash. Um, that's my main gig. But my fun gig is doing this stuff, right? Introducing yeah. people to your story and spreading your story. For those that never come down to Franklin or out to Cookville and never know that you exist, this is a great way that I can promote you and market you guys, all the different people that I have on here. I just had a guy on here that does uh, stories about people that uh, died in the military. Mm. And he tells that story about their entire life, not just how they died or when they died or what happened, but, you know, these people sacrifice to keep us safe. And those are the stories we need to share. We need to share your story. We need to share that story. We need to share all of these different stories. And I feel that same similar thing is what you do with art. You're sharing what you see through your eyes with other people so that they can take it home and enjoy it. And yeah, a lot of my clients, you know, they um, they work jobs where they don't get to get out in nature as much as I do. I've been blessed. Like part of my job is to be out in nature. <laughs> so I just am like when I paint that and I and then they put it in their office or like, oh, this is amazing because when I go on vacation, this is what I see. And right. now I get to like bring it and see it every day. It's almost like a window into their subconscious, better. into their yeah. memories. Yeah. And so we know the world too, that like you said, they're not getting to see except for a couple of weeks on vacation. Maybe, yeah. maybe they're doing something like that. But yes. I, I was attracted when I walked by and I don't know art. All I know is what I like. Right. I, I, I But I look at your stuff and I go, Oh, that's awesome. Like that. Can I get a shirt of that? Like that would be cool. Like the. I'd like to, I need to start a t-shirt business. I've been thinking about it, right? Why so not? I've got a guy in my networking group that does sublimation shirts. So uh -huh. I like the Hawaiian shirt. I like button ups and stuff. Yeah. They, I, I like him to look, but I like him to be bright. And so uh, you'll. Uh, was I wearing the flower shirt last time I came? Last. You know what's funny is I told my son I was doing a podcast. He was with me at the um at the farmers market, and he said, and he and I told him I said the guy's Australian. His name's Ed. Do you remember him? And he goes, Oh yeah, I remember it. And didn't he have like a flowered shirt on? He's he's got a good memory. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. And so I, I just, you know, it's I decided a few years ago to just follow my authenticity. To just yeah. be authentically who I am, which is a goofball. That, that's basically me, right? And and I love having people on like yourself that authentically are doing them, right? You're being you. You're, you're doing what you want to do and your kids are seeing that. How hard was it for you to learn the business side of what you do? I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Okay. No idea. Then we're both in the same boat. Yeah, exactly. I do my ta I do my taxes and uh I don't know. I know how to talk to people because I I was in the restaurant industry for 15 years. So right. I feel like that was like my training ground for what I'm doing now. Yeah. Um, but I, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know. I work on my website here and there. I'm I'm really a painter. I mean, that's truly who I am. I post on social media. Sometimes I don't for like a month, right. I go missing. Right. <laughs> you know, I just, I yeah. So I had Craig Alexander on. He's the guy that took this photo. He's also the one that did uh, the uh, ghost town of Broadway, um, which is this one here. You nice. know, so he, nothing down Broadway during COVID. He had a couple of cop cars. He tells the story. They were parked there. He said, I've been trying to get this shot for 20 years. Can you guys just like move around the corner? Yeah. Just 15 minutes. Oh, I get that. Yeah. 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 And he, he's such an awesome guy. And he, uh, He's allowing me to use these um, to to do my podcast, but he's such a great guy. And I, I find that there's so many humble people out there and we we don't think good enough about a lot of people and 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 realize that, 
look, we're all just trying to make a living. We're all just trying to raise our family, enjoy a level of lifestyle. And I think artists like yourself, you produce a product that allows us to feel that, right? We don't know why we feel that when we look at your artwork. We just do. And it's I all do the about same. The feelings. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all it's, about that. And I think being authentic to yourself and teaching your kids, hey, it's okay to have a business. It's okay to pursue your artwork. One of the things my daughter's struggling with is, Dad, I don't, I don't know that I should commercialize my art. I don't know that I should sell my art. And I was trying to tell her, I said, look, if God's given you the talent, then to bury that talent and not utilize it because you're not sure that you should sell it, you, you get to make a living too. You know, and it's taken her a while to come around to that way of thinking. Uh, you know, when we say, hey, you're coming off our phone plan, you're going to have to pay your own phone bill. You know, it starts to make sense for her. And she's the one that edits this podcast. So she might cut this whole period out, uh, this uh, whole stuff out. So, hey, Ashlyn, you know, <laughs> um, uh, so what's your what's your website and how can people find you? My website is emilynewmanfineart.com. And you can find me on Instagram, Emily Newman Fine Art. I'm also on Facebook, Emily Newman Fine Art. And that's about all the places that you can find. You can also find me every week at the Franklin Farmer's Market. Unless it's raining or snowing or a windstorm, I'm going to be there. Right. And that's at the factory, for those of you that don't know, yeah. in Franklin. And normally it goes, well, what time does it start? So in the, uh, right now we're doing 8 to 1. Okay. And in the eight. winter, it's 9 to 12. Okay. But so yeah, 8 to, 8 to 1. Eight to one in the spring, summer, fall, yep. and then nine to 12 in the winter. The winter. So depending on when yep. you listen to this podcast, folks, it's there. The factory is an amazing place to hang out and the farmer's market is really cool. I'm so, I'm so looking forward to when they get the tomatoes. Uh, I, I got introduced. Yeah, any day now. To, yeah. To Cherokee yeah. purple tomatoes. Oh my gosh. They're the ugliest looking tomato, but they taste the best. It's just great. That's the perks about being at that farmer's market is I get like the first pick of everything and right. it's incredible. And uh, I mean, I just get the best produce I do. So Emily, what a dream referral for you. Do you do, you do commissions or do oh, you? Yeah. Okay. So a dream referral for you, if you could be connected to anybody, do you have a name or do you have a type of individual that you would love a referral to? You mean like to do a piece for them? Well, you know, what would be a good ongoing piece of business for you? I mean, I would um, think like Williamson County Hospital, if they are or a medical center, if they were looking for an artist to do a series of artworks for their for their rooms, you know, they're re, they're building all that stuff down in Franklin, they're redoing yeah. that, adding a wing. Is that a good referral for you? Or yeah, I would love a large project. I mean, I would love um you know, like I've, I've had people do me, people have me do several pieces of art for their house. And I love that. Um, or, or, you know, I come into their home and I look at all this, you know, the wall space and then pick out paintings for each of the walls that I can do. I love doing things like that. Um, yeah. Anything on a large scale. I mean, I'm open for it. Um, a designer's, yeah. a designer's good referrals for you. Yeah, design. Yes, I've worked with a couple designers. They're good referrals. Um, as long as they like working with original paintings. Some designers don't. Right. Some designers use prints. Um, but the ones that like you working with original art, you know, like a piece of art that no one else is gonna have, I'm I would be your person to come to for that, you right. know. So folks, get out, get out to the farmers market, check out Emily, and if you can't get there, you can Check out our website and we'll have all the details in the in the notes. And uh, we're going to wrap up here in a minute. We just got to find some hidden gems that she's going to tell us about out in her neck of the woods. Um, there was something else I was going to say. I don't know. Oh, so people, they don't need to have a lot of money to get a little piece of your artwork, right? They can, like you said, magnets, postcards, greeting cards, all sorts of different things. Soon to be shirts, folks. You heard if it. You have, oh, yeah, I know. Right. I, I, I need to do that. I think yep. about it a lot. It's turning. There you it, go. Just takes, it takes me a while to get things off the ground. But um, like you can buy, I mean, in my tent, if you have seven dollars, you can buy a card. That's right. it. You can buy a card and people actually frame those. Um, I also have like ten dollar magnets, you know, you can 
And the nice thing about a $7 card, as opposed to the $7 cream cheese tart that I always go for when I get there, which I shouldn't, or the donuts, which are delicious. They are. Just think, folks, that $7 you spend on the card or the $10 on a magnet, no calories. There's no calories. Forever. It won't it won't hurt you later too. What, what you're participating in it causes pain. <laughs> yeah, what do they say? Is, moment, moment on the lips, forever on the hips. That's what I yes, that's what yes. time. So my paintings bring a lot of pleasure. So there you go. There you yeah. go. Hey Emily, it's so great to have you on the show. And uh would you come back and update us if there's major changes? We want to see experimental Emily. We'll have to come up with a new name for that segment of the business. And you could uh, good. use different products and, and have different <laughs> fun with different mediums. And, you know, no judgment here. No judgment. No. You know. Hey, and if you judge, that's cool, too. <laughs> I've gotten okay with judgment. I'm okay. Right well, yeah. great. Well, and then I would like to have you on one of the business podcasts sometimes just talking about the struggles as an entrepreneur. If you're oh, I, Yeah, I could talk a long time about that. Okay. Well, cool. Well, then I'm going to set you up for that. Hey, thanks so much for being on the show. And I look forward to seeing you next week at the farmer's market. Sounds good. Thanks, Ed. Whoops, I did the wrong one. I don't want to end the meeting. I just want to stop the recording. Folks, you don't have to be a professional at this. Don't try this at home. No, actually do try this at home. It is a fun gig. Go out and tell a story about somebody today. Get their story. Capture it on your phone. Put it on Facebook. There's lots of amazing people doing amazing things out there. You, we need your help capturing those stories. Instead of another picture of what you're eating for dinner, let's tell a story. Emily, you're in Cookville or the Cookville area. Tell us about some cool stuff if we get out that way. All right. So I don't go out to eat. <laughs> I don't. I love to cook at home. But if oh, you she's do, inviting us over to her house, folks. Yeah, I'm a great, I'm a great cook. But listen, if you want to do something outdoors, I highly recommend um, Window Cliffs Natural Area. It's a almost a six mile hike round trip, and you go through um, forests. You go through. Um, you have to cross the water 18 times total. It's gorgeous. Are, are you trying to sell us on this idea that this is a fun thing to do? It's so fun. Oh man, six miles. I wouldn't pack a pack a bag, some water, some snacks, go be out in Mother Nature. You'll come back a different person. Your wife won't even know who you are. Um, I I also love Standing Stone State Park. I think that's absolutely gorgeous out that way. Uh, that's in Hillham. And um, we have Rock Island, which is amazing. It's just they call it Rock Island. Cause it's just a bunch of rocks and, and it's just water everywhere. I'm a big water person. Um, and there's one more, Oh, Cummings Falls state park. Everybody loves that. The, the swimming hole. And right. I do, I canoe the Caney fork river as much as I can. Um, amazing. You know, spending 30 years in Kansas, There is a few different changes across Kansas, but there is not the abundance of cool hiking trails and things to do in the area where I live, which was just south of Wichita. But there is so much to do here, right? I mean, there's There's so so much. much. And you're always in the, and you're always surrounded, you know, that's what's beautiful about our areas. We're surrounded by so many trees. So you're shaded. If you get in, if you're in the water, you can jump in the water. You can jump in a creek. You can jump in a waterfall, a, a, a river. We were swimming in the river two nights ago with my son. Like you just, I don't know. I, I, I like to be outdoors. So this is like the perfect place for me. That makes sense. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing those with us. And thanks for reminding me. So we made sure we got them. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to look down here to try and find the record button. I wish they'd make a big fat record button that I could hit stop. Maybe I need to figure that out. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Thanks for being on the show. This is the Nashville 2 Podcast with your host, Edward Fox.